Hello and welcome to Planet Zoo where I try to recreate the Antwerp Zoo as accurately as I can. In today's episode I'm tackling the spectacled bear habitat. At this point in time we do not have spectacled bears in the game yet, not even as a mod. Which brings me to my next topic. I also want to spend some time talking about the recent developments in the Planet Zoo modding community. Sorry this will come off as a little rant, but by now I think most big YouTubers have addressed what happened and have shared their thoughts on it, uh, but I wanted to talk a bit about my view and how I'd like the future of Planet Zoo uh, to look like. So last week we got our first non-replacement mod for Planet Zoo, I believe it was the Thylacine, an animal that lived in Australia but went extinct in 1936. After that mod was published, a whole lot of other standalone animals were released, including the Northern Moose and even the Sand Tiger Shark. Immediately this sparked uh, several discussions in some Planet Zoo Discord groups I was part of. There were some people who were hesitant about using mods as Frontier, the developer of the game, doesn't officially support them and their position about mods is very unclear in general. On the other hand, there were people who got very excited and started speculating about which mods we might get next. Now, I will admit I was among this last group. My experience from other games has always been very influenced by mods and in general I do not understand why certain people would be against mods because the developers have said they don't support them. Of course, if you are a big YouTuber and you have an agreement with Frontier, do not use mods in order to gain early access to, to DLCs, that's perfectly fine. But it shouldn't take away from the general gaming experience of the, of the entire Planet Zoo community. At this moment in time, Frontier is at a crossroads. As several YouTubers have pointed out already, Planet Zoo is going a bit on the decline. Steam statistics have shown a gradual decrease in playtime for the game, to the point where it is almost similar to Planet Coaster, a game that's 4 years old by now. In my opinion, there are two ways Frontier can turn this around, and the two ways don't necessarily have to be mutually exclusive. Now the first one is the obvious one of publishing new and exciting DLCs, there have been so many people in the community talking about how great it would be to have aviary mechanics or aquarium mechanics etc. And with Prehistoric Kingdom coming up, a Planet Zoo like game which will include uh, aviary mechanics at the start of the game, Planet Zoo will have some real competition for the first time since its release. So Frontier, if you are listening, which is highly unlikely, keep up the good work and introduce us to new and exciting game mechanics just like the diving mechanic from the aquatic DLC. The second way to keep Planet Zoo alive is by fully embracing the modding community. I understand why Frontier would be hesitant about this. Each animal which is added to the game by a modder is an animal that could have been part of a DLC. Hence, modding it kind of takes away Frontier's ability to give the game new animals to put in their DLC. But let me tell you Frontier, if that is the way you are thinking about your DLCs, it's the wrong way. We are at the point of no return in terms of modding. People have figured it out. We now know how to add standalone animals. Anything that Frontier will do to try and reverse this will only hurt their image and their standing with the community. So instead of thinking about DLCs in terms of 5 animals and some scenery pieces, maybe Fr Frontier should start thinking bigger. Give us more animals per DLC. Give us new mechanics. Heck, maybe even integrate mods into the Steam Workshop. Having a community to keep the game alive, new and exciting, with mods will prolong the lifespan of Planet Zoo way more than 2 or 3 DLCs over the next year or two. Just look at games like Zoo Tycoon 2 or even Victoria 2, those games are 10 years or older but still many people play them even though there's no updates or DLCs anymore. Why is that? Well, because those games have generated and embraced a large modding community. A company like Paradox Interactive has integrated modding support in all of their big games, EU4, Hearts of Iron 4, City Skylines, Victoria 2. But that doesn't mean their DLCs are less successful. Frontier, take a page from Paradox book and embrace your modders. They love the game as much as you do and they want to see it do well as much as you do. Now enough ranting for today, let me know in the comment section what your thoughts are on the mods and how Frontier should handle them. Now I also want to talk a bit about the Antwerp Zoo itself, because after all this is a recreation of that zoo. Um, I was able to visit the zoo uh, last weekend and um, 
let me tell you it was really really fun now unfortunately a lot of animals are not in the zoo anymore uh, partly because of covid because large uh, working or construction works going on and stuff like that for example the uh, spectacled bears in this uh, enclosure here on this habitat are not actually there right now um, this is actually a temporary playground for people or for kids i should say so the kids can actually go in this habitat and play on these uh, like climbing stuff and things like that but of course for my recreation i wanted to have as many animals uh, as i could and uh, so that is why i actually kept the spectacle bear habitat as it was previously now of course we don't have the spectacle bear in the game and um that's why i use the formosan black bear uh it's a <laughs> it's a little bit of a big bear species but uh, they have the same color more or less and i thought well that would do fine actually for this recreation now, of course in the future depending on the dlcs or the mods i might go and i have an actual spectacle bear in here um other stuff that i noticed or did at the zoo while i was actually there uh, i took a lot of pictures of like weird corners and, and like stuff that you don't normally see in the regular photos or pictures people take at the zoo so i got some weird looks by other people who thought like why is this guy taking pictures of this little corner where there's nothing to see or why is this guy taking a picture of an empty habitat so, <laughs> quite funny <laughs> to see people wondering about that but yeah that uh, allowed me to do some changes for example at the, the back of the skywalk i didn't know that but there's actually like a, this little coffee shop thing there uh, where people can buy coffee uh, so I could add that in um, now the coffee there is actually quite terrible but anyways I still added that in as a shop here um, uh, sitting benches and stuff like that like all those little details that you don't uh, normally get to see on pictures you find on the internet and stuff like that oh so that was that was like the ideal opportunity to uh, find those things now this area I'm doing now was actually closed uh, during my visit so I'm kind of improvising but it still kind of works out for the next episode uh, we will finish that off but let's go into the live game and have a more detailed look at all the stuff I didn't show uh, on camera. And we're live inside of the game. Now I didn't show much of this being built in the time lapse um, but don't worry I will go into detail about it right now so basically there's like two um, habitats two separate habitats for the spectacle bears I am using of course the uh, Formosan bears here as I said earlier but I think this is the yeah this is the male one and this is the female one so they are kept separate in the zoo right here I don't know how the actual Antwerp zoo does it when they uh, have the speckled spectacle to uh, bears in there um, but yeah I kind of had to wing it in terms of decorating it because right now as I said in the during the speed build this is a playground for children uh, same with this one here so they have temporarily um, moved the spectacle bears out of here and so I have I had to kind of improvise this habitat now that means that this area is practically done and next uh, episode I can move on to building behind here the Jubilee uh, building which was built uh, well I'll, I'll talk about it more in the next episode but it was built uh, to celebrate basically the anniversary of the uh, zoo but yeah that's going to go uh, right here and I think um, depending on how far the mods will go uh, by then I may have Californian sea lions for them but I don't know it depends on the mod makers and whether or not they will prioritize uh, Californian sea lions I hope they do so I think it's one of the major animals missing from the game so hopefully I can I have enough room for them to fit in here as you can see it's quite a tight fit but I can 
Like I can change the angle of this to fit it and stuff like that. Yeah, I will go behind here and I've actually added in a path over here, as you can see. So the visitors uh, <laughs> or staff members can actually glitch through here, as you can see. <laughs> uh, well, that one just went down again. Yeah, they will. They can actually go up here, uh, up these stairs, and and then we can gradually move on to uh, like this area over here and this area. Yeah, I think this turned out really well. Um, I have discovered that the scale is actually way too big. Like I, 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 I said earlier, I went to visit the zoo um, this weekend. And yeah, I've noticed that my scale is a little bit off. It's a bit too big. And as you can see right here, I did some uh, off-camera tweaking of these areas I did not have pictures of these like little corners that are not really that interesting yeah that, that meant that I could basically move the toilet I had previously the toilet was like in this wall but it's actually more over here so you can actually see all those people going to the toilet there's a little coffee uh, bar over here where we actually drank coffee um, when we visited and then there's a little sitting area over here and over here, but that's for one of the next episodes. So yeah, I have this little corner that I was able to to do. I'm thinking about other stuff. Oh yeah, over here. Like, um, you can put your bike here if you come to the zoo by bike. You can put your bike in here. Now I put only four bikes in there, but I may like change that up. I, I don't know if you can change the color of the bikes, but if you can, it would. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you can actually change the color of the bike, so I might have to. I uh, might do that. Now over here there are lockers to put your stuff in that you don't need in the zoo, so I might have to do that as well. At the gift shop, I still haven't done that yet because I'm kind of putting off uh, interiors for for the last or when I don't really have anything other to do. Now, what else did I do? I think I also, yeah, I changed this up a bit. Now it's not entirely accurate. This door isn't actually here. There's like just no wall here. If I have to describe it, there's like no wall here and they just go behind there, I think. Yeah, these are two toilets um, over here for uh, people to use. Now over here, I've noticed that this is a little bit too, um, narrow for what it actually is but I'm not going to change that because we are we have this situation over here this very tight squeeze uh, in terms of the path over here but yeah uh, other than that this is pretty accurate like this whole area is pretty accurate to what the zoo actually looks like now another great thing is that I was able to basically uh, see what this area looks like so I'll be able to do that and also, of course, over here there's the, a door to go into the the, the monkey building, uh, the other monkey building in the zoo. So I'll have to put in the door there um, and then actually make it so that visitors are able to go through here. So yeah, and there's the monkey building over here. Other than that, um, something I noticed, like over here, and the penguin habitat, there is actually a netting stuff or a, a net above this habitat. I think it's to keep seagulls out and to keep them from like annoying the penguins, maybe even keep them from eating their eggs or stealing their eggs. And another thing I noticed was that this terrain is actually at the height of um, like this wall. So you are, you're at the, your eyes are at the level of their eyes. But of course, um, with how tricky terrain is in Planet Zoo, I am not able to do that, unfortunately. And so yeah, the netting extends all around here. Now netting is a bit annoying in this game. Um, I may try some different things, but okay, this this guy's glitched out. Okay. Um, any other stuff I can uh, think about? Not really. I think that's all uh, I changed since my visit to the zoo. Yeah. Um, 
Like this is also not entirely accurate. I noticed there are some stuff on the roof here, or there is some stuff on the roof here. Um, I, I may go back to that and change that. I don't know. The roofs are always tricky if there's like small little details and stuff. Now I'm, I am very excited about the mods, uh, the mod, the great or the big mod breakthrough that happened during this week, and uh, I I just hope that they add more variation like I need <laughs> specifically for this zoo the spectacle bears because now I'm using Formosan black bears uh, Canadian porcupines of course over there which I, I use pangolins for now more monkeys because right now I, I'm using capucin monkeys for this habitat oh my god something is did something die here <laughs> no it's just food rotting yeah these are Oh god. These are not actually in that habitat. Um, I think it's some black tailed whatever. I don't know the English thing. I know it in Dutch, but the mandrills are accurate, but like way further into the zoo we'll have like uh, is it the white rhino that is not in the game which I don't understand why because that's like like a basic animal and it's not in the game. Um, the Malaysian uh, Malayan tapir is also another one that's not in the game, that's in the zoo. Um, and that's the ones I can think of right now, but yeah, of course a lot of birds, but those will need specific mechanics. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and as always, if you want to see more, uh, like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye! Thank you.